Hi, this is Holly coming to you in Fern the Camper with just a couple of insights on being a happier camper owner. <sighs> if you wouldn't mind, just go down to the subscribe button, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get the newest updates of Fern the Camper. Stay with us. We'd love to have you and keep watching. I've been seeing a lot of interesting things online, a lot of comments on what is a happier camper and why would you want to buy one? Why would you want to live in something that's just 13 foot long? Why would you want to travel in something that doesn't have its own shower and toilet? And why would you pay so much for something like this? So for those who are wondering, for those who think I like the look of the Happier Camper but I don't like the price tag or I don't mind the price tag because you get a lot of goodness with it but I don't want to have to wait up to two years like some people have to, um, I'm going to give you some insights and some tips on what you can do to possibly even lessen your weight what we did and um, what I love about the Happier Camper and what I hate about the Happier Camper. Okay, what I love about the Happier Camper is it is so iconic and I feel this way about also the Scamps and the Casitas and all the other small retro trailers out there and the few people who are out there refurbishing these. You are doing such a beautiful job. I love seeing you on the road and I love seeing you on YouTube and on Instagram. Please keep doing that. That is wonderful and awesome. The iconic look. I feel like you cannot beat it. I've got my AstroTurf. I put it out just to give that little 60s flair um, and it's worked really well for us when we go camping. Um, we cook on it. Not directly on it obviously but I set out a little table even though we have our kitchenette inside I put my table out and I put my little grill out and I cook up our dinner and it's just so nice the AstroTurf rolls up I've got one for the side over here and I've got one for when we have the back up and it's below us behind us um, keeps the camper clean and a little bit more dry and it can take a weather beating. I mean, it it's, um, rolls up really thin. I shove it uh, underneath the master bed and then we're good to go whenever we need to travel. Just the pure convenience of being able to pull something so lightweight. Dry weight, the Happier Camper is 1,100 pounds. They claim that you really should have a 1,500 pound pull ability because once everything is inside the bag, it obviously adds a little bit to that. Pulling fern is so simple. I love that we can have a queen size bed in the back. And we still have a lot of storage up side and underneath the queen and that I can have Thorn just in her little single bed opposite us. And I don't get kicked at night because we're not stuck in a tent. We are off the ground. It just feels like the convenience of being in a clean, dry environment, yet you're so close to nature, you are still feeling like you're camping. I often see these larger RVs and I know they have such beautiful comfort. I know they have flushing toilets. I know they've got hot showers and I know they've got segmented rooms for all the family members who want to stay in them. 
they, to me, they just seem so loud and cumbersome. And if you own one of these large ones and you are annoyed at what I'm saying, please don't be annoyed. If you love it, that's wonderful. That's great. But for us, it feels like we are so disconnected from nature and the camping experience that we might as well have just stayed in a Motel 6. The other thing I love and the other smaller trailers do not have, this is one thing that the Happier Camper has above all the others, in my opinion, from what I've seen so far. If somebody else comes out with something similar, I take it back. But I have not seen anyone else with the modular ability of the Happier Camper. One of the wonderful things about Happier Camper is that you can move your bed around. If you want your master at the front, you can do that. If you want your kitchenette at the side and the back, you can do that too. If you want to have bunk beds at the front, you, there is something for that. You can move everything around. It, it's almost as if your imagination um, is the limit. There are sort of nine block areas where the queen size is for us in the back. And there are another essentially six potential spots where you can put these blocks. That, that just kind of frees up so much space and it just makes it so comfortable and adaptable. And we, we like that. We love the idea that we can take um, our bed apart and we can pull out these cubes and have a complete outside dining set with a table for six. Our table for six inside. Pull the bed outside and raise it up. We can do that too. Um, it's, it's really pleasant. And if we wanted to extend or expand or just, you know, pop an extra big tent on the back, this 13 foot trailer becomes something much larger. Sky's the limit. However many little spaces you wanted to add to the back. And I'm not just talking about the little tent that you can get with the Happier Camper because this back end opens up and you can get these little things that snap in and you can extend out probably about, well, the size of this whole back door. Um, but I mean, if you had lots of pop-up tents that kind of interconnected at the back, you could have like a whole village around your happier camper if you wanted that. But we don't. We like it the way it is. <laughs> what else do I love about the happier camper? I do love that when you're ordering, there are so many classic colors you can choose from. We went for... Um, the olive green and I thought you know this looks like a ferny color I'm, I can imagine myself in the woods and I wanted these tan covers and I wanted a stone finish I'll show you so it looks like sandstone to me there's a few other finishes you can you can go for but I you know like the casitas and the scamps they're really cute and all that but they're kind of boring sorry I know you can paint them, but they do lose their value when you paint them. I know Have your camper does not lose its value. <laughs> not in that way. Because you can order it with that color, which is fabulous. Ja! Okay, so what else I love about the Happier Camper? Um, I love the support I get from everyone at the Happier Camper uh, headquarters. We wanted the off-grid system, which if you've watched us before, you know all about. We've got our panel on the roof. Um, and I know a lot of people adapt their own campers to have this and they DIY it and they do really beautiful jobs. And that looks great. But I like that this was all done for us and um, we had everything prepared. We could put in our order to spec. There's a lot of downsides to that as well, which we will get to in a minute. But ultimately, I like the choices that we could make with this. The options seem nearly endless. Um, as I said, we chose the kitchenette. We chose the off-grid system. Um, we wanted to have the extra modules so we could have the queen size bed at the back. I've taken these modules out and moved them around. I've had this work as my office space. I've had this work as just like a little playroom for Thorn. And um, we still have not fully 
utilized everything yet. And uh, I like that. I like the idea that we're still discovering Fern and um, every time we go out we learn a little bit more and we become better at camping in Fern and uh, take little notes. I think, oh, what am I going to bring next time? Okay, next time, you know what, we're going to get an extra couple of solar showers. They rolled up and they could even fit inside the door pocket. Um, they're so easy and it's nice to have a hot shower when you're camping because every campsite we've been has been able to provide water. Some of them have coin operated um, tokens that you can use their showers for. Maybe you get like a minute and a half of free shower and then you have to pump in your token coins. But it takes about three to five minutes to have that water warm up if there's any warm water left in the tank at all. I don't like doing that. I'm really impatient. Um, maybe I'm the only one that's so impatient. And I know that's a massive fault, but we like our solar shower and I'll show you. Ah, it's our solar shower. It's just a bag with a nozzle on it. And we fill this up at the beginning of our camping day and we stick it out in the sun and that gives us two five minute showers plus a little bit left over. The downside for that, if it's cloudy it won't really warm up, but that water gets hot. <laughs> I mean it's really really warm. Sometimes you just need to cool it down a little bit, but I've taken that shower into um, camping showers just so I can hook it up atop something that's a little more solid and also it gives me the my privacy without having to wait for their water to warm up or keep pumping quarters into it. Yeah. On to things I hate about the happier camper. Well, the first one is the love-hate. Every time we take Fern out, we are stopped all the time. If I'm trying to make dinner, if I'm trying to get Thorn to sleep, um, if we're just setting up for the first time and it's a complete mess. Everyone stops. They're really friendly. They want to tell me that they love the camper. Oh my gosh, where can they get one? Um, and I do have a stash of cards for Sandra Conejo, who was the sales lady who helped me buy mine in case people want to do the same. Um, that is something getting stopped all the time. It's sweet. I love that people love the happier camper, but at times it can be a little much. So if you see us and you want to say hi, please do. I'm not complaining. I'm just thinking sometimes when you're out in solitude, being approached by so many people can be a little surprising. Um, and then sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes you're camping and you're in the middle of nowhere. Someone pulls up in their own camper and you're like, hi, welcome to the side or good to see you. And they blank you. The waiting, the waiting, the waiting. Oh my goodness. I know some people are still waiting and I love that it's so popular. Um, production is working their hardest to keep up to demand. And because of that demand being so high, more people are having to wait longer. So some people are waiting up to two years for their happier camper, which sounds insane to me. <laughs> so insane. But stay tuned because if you want to buy a happier camper and you do not want to wait for two years, wait till my tip at the end because we didn't have to wait that long. I'll tell you why later. All right. I, I, gonna put this under the hates. Although I think it is at the price range that's reasonable for the amount of work that goes into this. It is like a yacht. It's got 
fiberglass finish. It's got insulation. It's got better insulation than the older um, 1970s um, trailers that are, you know, this is based after. The cost is so high and um, that makes it really hard to, to justify purchasing a happier camper unless you are making six figures a year and this is just another bit of play money. That's a huge investment. So I'm listing the cost as a hate even though I understand why it is so expensive and I don't think that anyone's being ripped off by this. I just think that if you want something that's ready to go and at a nice finish, you're going to have to pay that premium. If you don't, <laughs> sorry, you can um, look online, uh, look on eBay, look on um, secondhand trailers. There's there's specific websites just for things like scamps and casitas. So you can find these gorgeous things that are needing some love and attention. I've seen one go for one thousand nine hundred and ninety-five U.S. dollars, but it needed work. You can definitely get a deal on these, and if you have the time and the patience and the skills, you can make something really beautiful out of those. So, price does definitely consider into the ouch factor of the happier camper. Reversing, <laughs> reversing. This trailer is difficult. It is difficult. And uh, I can almost see a lot of people nodding their heads at this. The shorter the trailer, the sharper um, it turns, the more unpredictable it seems to go. So it's not like you're reversing a long, solid bus. It's got kind of like a hinge in the middle. You're reversing your car. And if you turn your car to go this way, the trailer is going to swing that way which makes it um, a little tricky to reverse into a tiny driveway like ours because we have a 1920s house and the driveway was built for a Model T. And for those of you who don't know what a Model T is, here's a picture. Um, and they were much, much thinner cars. So we can just about fit the wheels on just like our normal car, we could just about fit the wheels on, but we have to do a wide angle in, even for a normal car. It's it's tricky for a trailer like this. It's really tricky. And because it's uphill, pushing it is not that easy. In fact, it's nearly impossible to push it uphill. And I would not try pulling it downhill because it will run away with you. Flat surface is fine. Hills, no. No, 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 no. So reverse maneuverability definitely comes in as a hate. It is the nature of the beast. And I have nightmares about having to go up or down a mountain where the road is so narrow. If we come across another car, one of us needs to reverse. Nightmares. But here's another love. I love that I can, I can connect and hitch and unhitch fern so quickly and with such ease. I mean, it is easy. It is so easy to hitch and unhitch. Um, I haven't even let Clive do it. He, I think he knows the gist, but I'm like, no, it's still fun for me. So I'm like, no, let me do it. Let me do it. And he's so patient. He lets me do it, which is, which is very sweet. Um, so far at every campground, um, you know, we've pulled in and we park our tow car where we want to park it. And then I just quickly unhitch Fern and, you know, we just roll her into place. If you don't like the view, we just spin her around. Um, I do that on my own super easy. Um, rolling her is really easy and it's convenient and nice. And then align it. It should fall right in the place. You don't oh, have nice. to hold it or anything, then just lower it. No. Oh, okay. Wow, you make it look so easy. <laughs> I don't know if this is a genuine hate, but it's certainly a fear. Um, I just get this feeling that because Fern is so lightweight, even if I've locked 
her um, ability to hitch away, that it wouldn't take much for someone to just grab a rope and tie it on and pull her away with us in it, or with us out not in it, and then we would never see Fern again. That, that, that is something I do think about. Other hates for Fern. Not really hates. Um, little niggles, I suppose. I like the blinds, but they let in a lot of light. We will be changing these. And um, I think we're, we're so new to Fern that we are reluctant to make any permanent changes. Because she is module, we move her around, but there's always, you know, the fear, not the fear, just the reluctance to, you know, drill any holes or make any changes that might be permanent, that we might change our mind on. I would love a little spice rack, or a rack of some sort, kind of behind the kitchenette, even though we haven't used the kitchenette properly yet. Um, I would like definitely to have a little bit of storage there, so if I'm in and preparing a meal, indoors rather than outdoors, everything's just a hand. You know, I've got my salt, I've got my, my pepper and sugar and baking stuff just right there. And of course we would take that down and stow it away when we were moving her. But, um, and decorating. I really want to decorate Fern on the inside and I've, I've seen some really sweet things I could put on the walls and i just kind of wary of changing anything. I know she's so sterile and clean right now. There we go. Here's a new hate. If this was an old beat-up scamp, I would not think twice about plastering things on the wall. But because this was so new and we waited so long for her, ah, I'm frightened to mess her up. Okay, so I promised you a tip on how to avoid waiting full term for your happier camper. And admittedly, this is not something everyone will be able to do, but everyone will be able to try if they wanted to. It just depends on how patient you are. There is a Facebook group called Happier Campers Owners Page, and you can go on that and you can wait for someone to say, I'm selling my happier camper, which sounds impossible because they are so new, but this has happened twice in the last 30 days. And both times that camper sold within 24 hours. And their owners are very, very happy. No one wants to get rid of their happier camper. We love them, but you know, life takes us in different directions and there's times when you can go camping and there's times in life where you just can't anymore or it's gonna be so long of a break, you need to pass that love on to someone else. And you know, thankfully this group page is one of those pages that can help you do that. The other way is to do what we did um, and this may have just been so lucky for us. When we ordered our Happier Camper, it was already in production. We did not have the opportunity to choose exactly the specs that we wanted, but we did. So, okay, let me just take you back. It was Christmas Eve. We went to go see the Happier Camper in the showroom after having looked at many, many, many different models of teardrops and small trailers that we could maybe just pull, but were all turned out to be the wrong size for us. It took me, I'm embarrassed to say, about 18 months to find the right trailer for us. And when we saw Happier Camper in the showroom, it just clicked. All three of us were like, yeah, this is it. And then we're like, how much? <laughs> no, we knew how much it was. And it's still a lot of money, but it is really worth it, in my opinion, if you have it. So, I mean, we got a discount for 
the special that was going on through the Christmas sale, which was nice. That pretty much paid for our solar. And, you know, there were two in production at the time. And um, we weren't sure at first if we were going to order our camper to spec exactly with the color from scratch or if we were going to choose one of these two. Now, the internal details could easily be changed up at that point. It was really just the color on the outside that was the only thing that was set. So there's a lot of people who really have no hesitation in making their camper their own. We have not done this yet. And that's probably my fault. <laughs> Thorn would be all over camping. I mean, like posting every little thing up on the wall. But I feel like when you have such a tiny space, every, every millimeter counts. And you have to make that decision count for you in the best way. So I'm going to take maybe a year to decide this and then I think after that year it's going to be decoration time. And uh, it might be maps on the walls, it might be just um, prints of different ferns from around the world all over the ceiling, and I definitely think there'll be a spice rack or shelf up over the kitchenette, and definitely different curtains, better blackout curtains. We'll see. So that's it. Um, my loves and my hates for the Happier Camper. If you have something different to say, please leave a comment below. we love to hear from you. And if you're still waiting, tell us your story. If you changed your mind, tell us your story. Love to hear from you, and uh, thank you so much for giving us a watch.